a neighbor brought over this piece of a stove which is about a hundred years old and it's made out of cast iron and it is fractured and he needs it repaired in order to repair it I'm going to need to use dry sand it was raining outside and so I have the sand on the stove here as you can see so that I could dry out take the moisture out of it so I can use the sand towards the end of this video as you're going to see <laughs> I came out into the garage to check the progress of the cast iron weld. I'm not going to pull it out of there um, because I just, I just want to check the temperature. So I'm going to stick my finger on the sand and it's it's not hot at all. If I push my finger down about an inch, um, it starts to get warm to the point where I don't want to push my finger in any further down towards the metal. So I know that it's still warm in there, still cooling down. So I'm going to give this another 45 minutes or an hour and come out and check it again. If it's cool enough to the touch at that point, then I, f I will feel like it's cooled down enough that I can take this out, um, do a little bit of finished grinding on it, and then give it back to my neighbor. Um, if you were to take it out too fast and let it cool too quickly, the cast iron, the only way I can describe it is maybe crystallizes. That's the way I'm describing it. I'm not sure if that's the right term or if that's exactly what's happening. But if you just start welding on cast iron, it heats up too fast. And if you uh, don't let it cool down slowly, but, such as burying it in sand or a thermal blanket, um, it'll cool down too fast. It does this crystallization and, and the weld ends up then failing. It ends up breaking where you weld it. Um, the weld in and of itself may not break, you're just going to break where it's attached to the cast iron, where the weld hits the cast iron. But if you do everything slowly, meaning you bring it up to temperature um, before welding it, and I, I'm not sure exactly what temperature you have to bring it up to, um, I think it's four or five hundred degrees at least, but uh, you bring it up to temperature before welding, then you weld it, and then you bury it in sand or let it cool down slowly, then it will... Um, not do that crystallization and you'll get a, a strong weld out of that. All right, it's been about two hours to two hours and 15 minutes since I buried this in the sand after welding it. I'm gonna check the temperature again. I'm going down about uh, half my finger and it it's not hot, so I'm gonna pull this out now. It's warm still, but it's not hot. So that means it's cooled down slowly. It's still warm, like I said, but it's I can easily I can easily touch that. So here's the weld and what it looks like. Um, the top I'm going to have to grind down a little bit because this is supposed to sit flush on a table. The bottom, however, I may leave that weld just for extra strength. Um, it does stick up a bit. I welded that second. Um, the top is a lot flatter, but that's because I had the bevel in there, and after I welded it, a lot of it filled in on this side and this side and so when I put the bead down on this side it built it up. I may grind it down a little bit, I, I haven't decided yet.